Hi there, my friend and friends. Writing JavaScript to do things that are like styling related has always felt a little bit strange to me. There's stuff JavaScript should do, but whenever it just comes to styling only, then it seems like CSS should be enough to do the job. And luckily as CSS is maturing as a language and we're getting a lot of new features, there's new stuff that is opening up, like creating a button like this one that's directionally aware, or at least a little bit directionally aware, uh, that we can do with basically CSS only. There's a few little tricks in getting it done. And while we are going to have to leverage a newer CSS feature that actually has better browser support than you probably think it does, it also doesn't ruin the experience for people who have an older browser. So if you're curious about how we can build that, then let's dive right into VS Code here. And I'm assuming the first thing you're going to want to do this is a button. Uh, I'm not even gonna throw a class on here. Obviously you'll probably have a class. Maybe it's on a link that looks like a button, whatever. Uh, let's just do click me, hit save. And when we do that, we have a big giant button that is right there. And that's because I've already added some styles here just to speed things up. There's really nothing fancy that's in here. Uh, I've just put some padding, a background color, made the border radius so it's curved. And you know, you could do this with any button that you want basically. Uh, so whatever styles you want, I have a hover and focus visible changing the background on there. Put whatever starting point you want for your button and it should work. There is a little gotcha here though in how this is going to work, um, which is we're going to add some more stuff here. <laughs> and so uh, I am gonna come in here and I never like doing this, but we're gonna add a span there and we're gonna add a span here. Um, when I first thought of doing this, I was going to use pseudo elements, but we can't detect hover on pseudo elements specifically. Um, so it wasn't able to work. Now I will admit this is a little bit annoying having to nest those in there, especially if you're just writing like vanilla HTML and CSS, if you're using something where you're creating a component, it really wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, so it depends on how you're setting things up. But if this is a react component or even you know, Svelte faster or whatever it is that you're building out, then you'll be fine. You just call it fancy button or something and you never have to worry about those spans again. But we're going to leave it like that for now because we're keeping things nice and simple so people can implement this however they want. And so yeah, we have those two spans there. And so we're going to have to set those up. So let's select those. I'm just going to do button span so I can select both of them. And most of these styles will apply to both, uh, but we'll sort of break things down from there. But the first thing we can do, let's give them a background. We're not going to see them at the beginning, but we'll do background. Uh, we'll do orange red because orange red is kind of a nice color. Of course, they should have a position of ab, ab, absolute on them. I'm going to give them, we have the position absolute. And actually, this is one of those things I didn't put on the main button yet. I'm going to add a position relative here. We're going to have a few things we will be adding to this button that are specific for this effect to work. But we have the relative that's going to be here and then the absolute on the span. And let's give them a width of 33.333%. I don't know how many decimals you really need in CSS, but that should do the trick for this. Now we will not be leaving the width like this, but we, we're gonna set it like that for now. Um, we could set the height to 100% too, just so we actually see them. Uh, and now we actually wanna position them in the right places. So for that one, I'm just gonna do button and then do first child. Now this effect, you could actually add a lot more fidelity to if you had a lot more pieces in here, but for a button effect like this, I think just having three zones is going to be enough. We're gonna have a left zone, a right zone with the spans, and then the middle zone will just be no span at all. Uh, if you are gonna do it with more, you'll wanna use nth child and like select based on number, but we're just gonna do first child for this first one. And so we can just say a left of zero and a top of zero. So it gets positioned right there. And then we can duplicate this one right here, but choose this one as my last child instead. And instead of the left, we can do that on the right side. And that's basically all we need to do to get those in the right spot. Uh, we'll come back to the span right here and we will do, we will, we will do a Z index and negative one to move it backward. But I don't actually want them to be lost completely. Do we, does it matter? Doesn't, uh, yeah, I think we, hmm. I'm not sure we will need this for something else though. Uh, so I'm gonna do my isolation of isolate, which creates a new stacking context and keeps them from going behind the background of my original button. You might be saying, Kevin, that's a little bit weird because we don't wanna see them. We are gonna change the color of these. Um, I'm gonna drop the opacity for now, just so they're not so bad, but we will uh, eventually be making them completely transparent anyway, so you're not going to see them. The other thing this makes us realize is right now they're sticking out the sides. We will have to turn an overflow of hidden onto the button itself, but I'm gonna do that a little bit later just because having the overflow on there is gonna help everything make sense um, on how it's working. And then we'll sort of do the last steps at the end 
to turn off all of those things. So now is the real trick. And I actually shared this on the community post earlier and everyone assumed I use pseudo elements, I guess, because they know me. Um, but we're only gonna use one of them and it's gonna be for what creates that effect right there. So we're gonna say on the before, let's give it a width. Um, the width on this, actually it's a before, before we do the width, we'll give it content so it exists. I mean, we'll give it a position absolute because we need to be able to move it around and it it has to be it, like whatever. It needs to be absolute so it's out of the flow. Uh, I'm going to give this one a background of hot pink. So once we start giving it size, we'll actually be able to see it. And I'm going to give this a width of 10%. I obviously went with like a gigantic font size on here. Uh, but hopefully by this being a percentage, it just means that it would work no matter what size you end up setting things to. Uh, the only thing that's really important with the width here is that it's smaller than the entire button because it's going to make it a lot easier to center. Uh, and the reason for that, first, let's give this an aspect ratio of one, which just means the height and width are the same. And let's give that a border radius of 50%. So it is a circle. And I want it to be dead centered inside my button. So to be able to do that, the easiest thing to do is an inset of zero, which means top, bottom, left, and right of zero, and a margin of auto, and it's going to go right in the middle. If we had our circle being bigger and then we were trying to do different things to shrink it down, that sort of doesn't work. But this is just, if you're using position absolute or fixed, inset zero, margin auto, it's centered. Uh, you don't need that weird translate hack to actually get things to go. Um, always super handy to be able to do that. Now, just like those other, you know, these transparent things that will become our, our spans on the edges, I should be saying, um, just like those, we do want them to be behind. I don't want this to actually cover the text. So on here, I will also give this a Z index, Z index of negative one, just so it's behind the text itself. It's more of a background effect, not something that's going to be at the forefront. And now is actually where the magic happens. We have everything set up to act, create what we need to happen here. Um, so what we're going to do is let's do it just so it works out of the middle and then we'll get it working for the two sides. And so to do that, it's actually the easiest one. We're just going to say button active and we can choose the before. And so when uh, and active means like we're actually clicking on it. So this would work on a phone too. It's not just a hover effect, right? Um, so the active before means when the button is active, the before will do something. And so when the button is active, the before is going to get a scale and we're just going to scale it up. So we'll do that as a transform. We could do scale as its own property now as well, but we'll scale this up. And the important thing is that it ends up being big enough because like a lot of the time we do a scale two or something, but it's only twice as big. So you just want to make sure this is a big enough number. And I'm actually going to make it a really big number, which might seem a little bit like overkill. Maybe we could actually shrink that one down a little bit. Um, and we'll see, but maybe we do need the 20 and it's because we need this to actually get really big. Um, if we're going to have it work by coming off the two sides as well, because right now in the middle, obviously it's covering the entire thing, but if the circle is growing from here, we need it to reach all the way over to that side. But before we worry about that, let's just come here and do a transition of the before we'll do scale for now. So the scale, um, or not scale transform, I should say transform. And let's just say 500 milliseconds. So we actually have something. So when we click, it grows, we let go, it shrinks. Nice and simple, right? Um, let's change this color now. And I already have this color right here. Again, use a color that works for you. It's just a dark blue color that I'm using. And for now, actually, let's come and change these spans to be transparent. Um, and I guess if we didn't even declare anything on there, it would be fine, but it's just kind of ugly. So now we'll turn them back on um, if we need them. But when I click, it gets really big. When I let go, it gets really small. So that's sort of the effect that we're after. But obviously, we don't want it to explode outside of the button like that. So as I mentioned up here, we can also come with an overflow of hidden on there. And so now when it grows, it takes up all the space. And then when it goes back down. So it already looks kind of cool. Obviously, there's a few other issues. We don't want to see it while it's in the middle and everything else, but I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, and you know what? Let's let's just do our background of hot pink for now, just because it makes it easier to see what's happening, because now we want it to go from the two sides. And that's where the I said the magic was happening before. This is where the real magic happens uh, by using has. So we can say has, and then I can choose first child active. And this is kind of interesting that it works uh, in a sense, because even though I'm clicking like here, it's the button that's active, less so the first child, which is that span. But hey, it works. And just to show you it works, the background here will turn to red. And so if I click here, it's the same. If I click on this side, um, let's turn off the scale change for a sec. It, 
click here, everything looks normal. If I click on this side, it changes over to red. So what that means is we don't actually want to change the button itself. What we want to change is the before on that button that has the first child, which is active. Um, and if you remember, I use margin auto to center it. So like there's different ways we can move stuff around. My favorite thing to do is to say, if it's the first child, the margin right, uh, left, I should say, the, yeah, the margin left will be zero. Uh, and that just means if I click on this side, it's moving from there over to here. That's all that's going on. We'll turn, turn off that scale again to really see. I click here, it moves to that side. Is the margin auto, which was centering it, is now zero, so it moves over to that side. Now we can take that same thing, do the margin right if it's the last child. And again, this is where if you had more fidelity, you'd have a lot more work to do with like different positioning stuff on this. But now if I do that, click in the middle, it stays in the middle, I click on that side, and if I click on that side, it moves over to the right side because it has a margin left of auto, which pushes things all the way over. Nice and simple. <laughs> The simpler we can make things, the better. And then when we scale it up, if I click in the middle, it grows from there, it grows from that side, or it grows from that side. Pretty cool. Now it's not perfect, but most of everything you need is here. The finishing touches here are just to make sure that when we let go, see how it like jumps back to the middle and it always shrinks to there? We can't really prevent that with this type of system. So what we can do instead of trying to prevent that, or maybe you could actually with like, transitioning your margin left and having delays on stuff. So if you want to try that, I don't even know if margin would work to animate it, to be honest. So anyway, we have better ways of fixing this up anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is on this before here, we can set the opacity and my CSS here is not very well organized, but we can set an opacity of zero uh, on the before. So now we can't actually see it. Uh, and then I went to click expecting it to show up for some reason. Uh, so when we have the button active, we can make the opacity go up to one. And so if I click in the middle, it appears and then disappears. Still not perfect by any means, but it's going to be better. Now, the cool thing with that is it also works on the sides where the opacity will come up because the button is active, even if it's the child that's inside of it that we're clicking on. Um, I think what we're going to do now, we'll bump this back up to 20. There's a few things here where if we click this way, the speed of the animation is actually pretty good when we go on the sides. If we go in the middle, it's double the speed because of the way it looks, I guess, uh, right? Where it just grows super fast from the middle because of we're getting sort of the side, whatever. It looks way too fast from the middle, whereas from the sides, it looks a little bit better. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the transition off of there and I'm gonna move the transition here. And there's an important reason I'm gonna do that uh, so I'm going to have the transition here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to select this, and we could, I mean, it's just one line of CSS, but I want both of these here, and we're going to have the transition on those as well. That would be this one. And what we can do now is I can actually make this one longer. So I can say this is like a thousand milliseconds. So going that way, it takes a thousand milliseconds. And I go on the sides here, it's doing it in half the time. And it actually makes it feel a little bit more just like organic in how it's working. So we have it growing in that way. We have it growing in that way. And then we have it coming in that way. Uh, the other thing we could do here is add the opacity in here as well. So we can just comma opacity and do that at like 250. Just so it like it's we're sort of fading in the opacity a little bit. And actually we need the opacity on this one too. Opacity. And for that, again, we could do it at like double the speed. You could set this all up with custom properties. You could have one thing that's controlling it um, and you update one number and sort of all of these get adjusted based on that number. So now if I click in the middle, it grows from the middle. If I click on the left, it goes that way. If I click on the right, it goes that way. It's looking good, but obviously when we let go, it's kind of weird that it just vanishes. It doesn't look fantastic yet. So I'm going to take this transition here and I'm going to bring it on to the button before the entire thing. And I'm going to drop it here. Now, we're not going to keep everything the same, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And we're going to start with a really slow opacity change just to make it really obvious um, how this is working. So if I do here, it looks okay. But when I let go, it's weird, right, that it, it circles back onto the center. So for me, the easy fix here is actually delaying the transform animation from happening by the length of the opacity one. So for now, we'll put a thousand milliseconds. Um, so what now what happens is if I transition or when we transition, it's just going to fade out. 
And then, so if I do this side and then it just fades out, if I do that side, it just fades out because the transform hasn't come in yet. The transform is still exactly where it was at the end. So it's not actually scaling down. It's staying big and it's dropping the opacity. The thing with this is over a thousand milliseconds, it still doesn't look good. But if we do it very quickly over say 200 milliseconds, the problem that's happening now is if I click and it grows and I let go, it's still delayed. So like if I click on this side, it's fine. If I let go and then click again, it's coming in because that delay, we're still, it's still counting down that 1000 milliseconds. So it's just really important that this number and this number do match each other. Uh, and again, maybe a custom property there if you wanted to sort of improve on things a little bit could work. So now if I go here, it fades that way. We can go here, we can go there. And when we let go, it's always fading out. The one problem is the color of it being hot pink, I don't think looks very good either. So now we get it from the middle. And of course you can update the timing on all of these. If you make it faster, make it slower, whatever you want. Um, lower the opacity of this. We can come in at like a 0.25 or something like that. This is the space separated syntax where you do use a forward slash. So it's a little bit more of a subtle effect rather than that in your face one. It really depends what you want to do. Um, and you know, you can play around with it, have some fun with it and use it however you'd like. And I did promise to talk about a bit about browser support. And basically this is using has, uh, to, to function properly. But if we didn't have has working in, let's just come and put this back up so we can see it a little bit more clearly, it's going to grow from the middle or grow from the middle or grow from the middle. So if you're on a browser, that's not currently supporting has, then you'd get a little bit of a different experience, but it's still gonna look cool. It just won't be as sort of cool that it's coming off the sides or whatever. And you might be saying, but Kevin has, doesn't have great browser support, but guess what? Uh, that's not bad. <laughs> uh, we're only waiting on Firefox really at this point. And obviously for some older um, browsers that it will never be supported in, namely in Safari on old iPhones and stuff, but it's already past 86%. So using it for progressive enhancement like this, I think is a pretty good use case of using something like this, where you're not actually ruining the experience of anyone. And if this is your first experience in seeing has, and you'd like to know more about it and some of the stuff it can do and a bit more to understand how it's really working, I have a video right here where I break it all down and look at a few cool examples. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome Enrico, Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.